fight night. Carrie Underwood won American Idol 10 years ago, Whoa. and it's, I know it's crazy, and has since gone on to win countless awards and, of course, sell millions of records. Yes, Storyteller is her fifth album, and when I sat down with the beauty, she gushed about her newborn son and how he will always have a piece of Canada with him. You're just more in love with this baby than you ever imagined. Oh, and in love is a good way to describe it. I'm head over heels. She's talking about her five-month-old son, Isaiah, her first child with hubby Nashville Predators Center and Canuck, Mike Fisher. It's important for Mike that his son has a Canadian passport. He's, uh, he's been from day one. How's Mike as a dad? He's awesome. He's such a great dad. We went to London and I had to leave him home, but it was so nice to know that, like, Mike's got this. Carrie might be a proud mama, but don't expect her new album, Storyteller, to be filled with songs inspired by her son. I kept getting questions about, like, oh, how has being a mom, like, changed? I'm like, they ask dudes these questions. They ask guys, like, how is it? I don't know. It's, it's, another, it's another dimension as a human that I get to explore. But I, I kind of feel like everybody expected me to kind of make like this wussy mom record. The seven-time Grammy winner has a lot on her plate these days. A new album, a tour, and a clothing line. She talks about juggling it all on her first single, Smoke Break. Sometimes I need a smoke break. Just about like finding that thing in your life, just five minutes for yourself. It's hard for people to find that five minutes. It is. Like trying to be everything to everyone. I just don't know where they go. The minutes fly by. They do. It's like you always have like the best like hair days or whatever <laughs> when you don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> and eight times a charm for Carrie. She's co-hosting the Country Music Awards again this year with buddy Brad Paisley. Hosted by Brad Paisley. That's right. And Carrie Underwood. Oh. What is the secret to your magic between the two of you? We're like brother and sister, and we argue like brother and sister. There's a great chemistry yeah. on stage. It's hilarious. Hey, we're, we're Brad, Brad Paisley, Paisley and, and Carrie Underwood. Underwood. We always talk together. <laughs> It's not weird at all. And we work hard. We both take it really seriously and want to do a good job and want to entertain. Don't miss Carrie hosting the Country Music Awards November 4th, only on City. And keep up with all your favorite pop stars by checking out the latest music videos on Rogers On Demand, Channel 100. Thanks for watching Your World This Week. We leave you now with a look at AMC's newest show, Into the Badlands. Bye. See you later. See you later. Bye. 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 There is no God in the Badlands. <laughs>
I got a military age male uh, on a cell phone watching the convoy over. If you think he's reporting troop movement, you have a green light. Your call, over. Maybe he's just calling his old lady. <laughs> he stepped off. Hold on, I got a woman and a kid 200 yards out moving towards the convoy. Her arms aren't swinging, she's carrying something. Yeah, she's got grenades, she's got an RKG rushing grenades, you say it to the kid? You say a woman and a kid? You got eyes on this, can you confirm? Negative. Your call. special series. <laughs> Sam and Tom Baker's battle in this devilishly frightful competition. Are you scared? <laughs> you should be. With freaky ingredients. I feel like a mad scientist. Spooky creations. I have a twisted sense of humor. And villainous judges. You're a sick dude, you know that. I'm so grossed out, but in a good way. This looks icky, sticky. <laughs> you really hit it. Who has the monster's makings of a Halloween baking champion? Halloween Baking Championship. New episode Wednesday at 10 on Food Network. The minute you walk in the joint, I could see you were a man of distinction, a real big spender, good looking, so refined. Say, wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my mind? Mordecai. Mordecai. Charlie Mordecai. Bit of a moron, actually. Oh, I believe I've just shot John. Excellent shot, sir. Man down. Who knows? This may be a customary greeting in America. I don't know. Charlie Mordecai, where are you? Oh, a terribly vulgar place called Los Angeles. I am Mordecai. Do you need help with your bags? No, I do not need help with my bags. I have a bloody manservant. We've lived in the sticks now for almost three years. This will take two months, max. And when I get into a project, it is never, never just short and sweet. There was so much stress. It was like perfect. piling up. I guess it's all still up for debate. You know how those go. I wasn't worried about whether or not we should do it in the long run. I was worried about the cost. But I... Unbelievable. House of Brian, the final straw. New episode Sunday at 9 on HGTV. fake city that map makers would put on their maps so then if they get copied illegally then they'd know. Well what? Tagle in New York. Caltech is probably the safest place to be right now. Professor, it looks like the whole San Andreas fault line is being activated. And it's heading towards San Francisco. Could you be more specific, please? Oh well, Miss Newton? You wanna tell our new recruiters what they're looking for? Dreamers. We are looking for dreams. Welcome to Jurassic Park. When I saw the first Jurassic Park, I just walked away having my mind blown. It was like...
Welcome to New Canadians, where we present helpful information and inspiring stories of recent immigrants who now call Canada a home. I'm Gerard Kalajian. I'm Rachel Lee. As immigrants ourselves, we know how challenging and difficult it can be to find your way in a new country. That's right. And while Canada, especially our city Toronto, is very welcoming and multicultural, it can still be overwhelming. Definitely. From getting your health card to your driver's license to having your credentials recognized might make you feel lost without any idea where to begin. Exactly, and that's why New Canadians presents helpful and accessible information on employment, settlement, small business and education resources to get you to succeed, especially on developing your skills and getting a job. And bringing you closer to getting a job is just what HR Connections at Access Employment is all about. Exactly, it's a seven-week employment outcome program that is designed to move internationally trained human resources professionals into their fields of expertise. And Rachel, recently I had the pleasure to meet Alberto Rodil, an immigrant with an amazing determination to succeed. Yes, he went back to school and did survival jobs at the same time until he finally reached his dream. And in addition to finding employment or upgrading their skills, new immigrants should also consider getting to know their new city. And one of the best ways to do that is through using public transit. I agree, and some viewers may actually be wondering where we are today. We're actually at Union Station, which is the main transit hub in the heart of the city. And it's a gateway for many newcomers. But first, Rachel, let's celebrate the first annual Toronto Newcomer Day. Which saw over 25 community agencies and city divisions working with immigrants come together to, to participate in an information fair at Nathan Phillips Square. Today was the first annual Newcomer Day in Toronto and it's been proclaimed by the mayor as such and we had several uh, different activities mainly uh, located at uh, Nathan Phillips Square and a few activities within the city hall. We had an information fair where newcomers and anyone else could uh, learn about uh, city services and services that community agencies provide to help newcomers settle and integrate in Toronto. In Toronto, we know that over 50% of our population is immigrants. And yet, when immigrants come to Toronto, usually it takes them a while to get into their profession at an appropriate level of their employment, experience, and their education. Why we're here today and at Newcomers Day is so that we can connect with those newcomers so that they understand what the programs that we offer, that we deliver as part of the mandate that we have as the Immigrant Employment Council for Toronto so that we can all prosper. So uh, we're here at this table, the Toronto South Local Immigration Partnership. Basically we're a partnership of agencies in the downtown area that serve newcomers in one way or the other and so we have a lot of information for newcomers including a brochure that we basically just launched a couple of days ago that have listings of all the agencies that they can go to for information. We just landed here on uh, the 7th of, mid, uh, of this month. We have also two kids and I um, come here especially for those kids. I have received some brochures about uh, child's dental care, about their immunization, which is very important for us. It's a little bit, a uh, little pretty good program because I've already made some uh, mentorship program, networking program, and social services program. Uh, all of them, uh, some of them, I didn't even know uh, if I don't come here. We also had a speaker's corner uh, where we filmed uh, people, including newcomers, telling us uh, why they love Toronto. We also had several activities within the City Hall, and uh, some of them included a book reading by Theresa Totten, an author, and, and the reading was uh, about fitting into Canada. We also had, as part of the Newcomer Day, uh, in Council Chamber, uh, a citizenship ceremony where 56 Cana new Canadians gave an oath of uh, citizenship. It's really an honor to be a part of the ceremony, to hear some great people talk about Canada and the good things about Canada, and the good things about being a, a citizen of Canada. 
I'm very excited and I am very proud to be become a Canadian. This is a very important day for me and my family. Personally, I've been waiting for that day like since forever ago and it's finally like time like when I mark my journey and I feel so accomplished about it. I'm looking forward to explore more about here even though I've been here for a long time but um, this is really a great place. I'm very thrilled to have been part of this important day. Having the city of Toronto recognize and proclaim Newcomer Day is important, I believe, for all new immigrants and refugees to the city of Toronto. I think it signifies the importance that the city pays to our diverse communities. I think it signifies the important role that immigrants and refugees play in the life of the city, socially, culturally, politically, and economically. We're fortunate that many Canadian cities like Toronto are recognizing the importance of celebrating newcomers and helping them get into the city with events and activities like Newcomer Day. And for most newcomers, the best way to go to these events is through public transit such as buses, subways and regional trains. Recently, a new express train that connects Toronto's Pearson Airport to Union Station opened up called Up Express. Mm -hmm. That's right, and I had the chance to sit down with Anne-Marie Aikens of Metrolinx, which is the regional transit agency that operates Up Express. Anne-Marie, give us a brief background of the train that we're on right now and its benefits for Toronto. Well, Toronto has waited for a direct air rail link for the past 30 years, and we finally have it. So it's pretty exciting for us, and you have now have a co very convenient, fast way to get to and from the airport. Everyone can uh, recognize the anxiety when you have to try and get to the airport. You get stuck in traffic. We have a lot of congestion in the Toronto area. You never know how long it's going to take you to get there. Now you'll know. You come to Union Station. For $19, you can get from... A Union Station downtown all the way to the Pearson Airport. All right. So you just mentioned $19. Um, how is that pricing available compared to maybe a regular adult price? Well, we have all kinds of pricing options. So you can buy tickets, but uh, the best way, and I would recommend everyone get a, a Presto card, which is our smart card. It allows you to travel right throughout the uh, transit systems in the GTHA and, uh, and, and allows people to get around conveniently. So get yourself a Presto card. The, the prices are cheaper and, and you'll be able to travel, if you, especially if you're going home to see family uh, frequently or traveling for business. This is the way to go. Great. And once this uh, UP Express train was finally available for people in the city, what kind of reviews um, have been received? Well, we're a brand new service, so uh, ridership is just beginning to grow as people become aware of us. A lot of people didn't know, don't, still don't know we exist, um, and, uh, but the reviews are nearly 100% glowing. They love it. They love the fact they can get there in 25 minutes consistently. They can depend on that. We have places to hold your luggage, just like an airline whether it's above bins or in, in luggage racks. So it's, it's really convenient. If you ha are mobility disabled, it's very accessible. And can you give us um, a quick summary of the uh, different public transit methods that are available? Well, once you get into the city through by using Up Express, then you can use, uh, it comes into the Union Station or it comes into two other stations that have access to the Toronto transit system call it the TTC or a, a GO Transit, which is um, our regional transportation system, which gets you uh, right across the region, all of uh, Greater Toronto and Hamilton area. So we have buses, we have heavy rail, we have subway, we're building uh, a light rail transit now. We have streetcars, there are a lot of options to take transit. That sounds like there's a lot of interconnection between the different types of transit methods. Um, how is that possible? Well, one of the things we do as uh, transit builders is you make transit hubs. And hubs mean that uh, a GO train may arrive to this destination and then people can get off and switch to another. Where if it's the, the Toronto Transit Commission or it's a bus to get someplace else, it's a place to p park their bike. We want people to get to transit easily using all different ways. Um, so that's what we're trying to design many of our stations. Union Station is like that now. You can get on multiple syst systems. You can get on the VIA train. You can get on the TTC, GO Transit. We're all right there. 
So within the city, there may be a lot of complaints um, regarding transit. What kind of response is given to those kinds of uh, feedbacks? Well, I think what people complain about transit is, uh, is that it's too crowded. Uh, it's not available in their neighborhoods. Uh, so it's not as convenient as they want it to be. So we under completely understand that. So more transit is coming. We have the biggest uh, transformation of our transit systems underway now. It's not going to happen overnight, but over the next decade, uh, we have never seen this much, much investment. So, so more is coming. Our goal is, with transit, is to get people out of their cars, out of, off the highway, into transit. It it's, uh, it it's improves your emotional health, your physical health, and your financial health. So uh, th that benefits all of us. So Anne-Marie, can you give us um, your own recommendations on what to do in the city when you first get here? Well, so when you're coming, you arrive at Up Express in, at Pearson. We'll take you quickly down to Union Station. And at Union Station, you can even change your money. Everything is right there. You can visit the, the CN Tower, which I love. The aquarium is, a, is relatively new. That's very cool. And we have hundreds and hundreds of restaurants. We're the best place to, if you like to, to dine out. Uh, again, right in the downtown core. There's so much to do in this city. They're going to love it. Right. I needed this kind of bridge program or this kind of training so I could put a more relevant application and the employer could also be more confident when they're assessing and screening my application. The following program is brought to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive content for free. Visit RogersAnyplaceTV.com. Here we all are, with nothing but our wit and our will to save the world. So stand and fight. I cannot emphasize this enough. You need to get out. And I mean now. Everybody down! We're giving you a new identity. You're Penny Morgan, divorced housewife from Iowa. The confidence builder. Body Break Kids with Sierra Johnson. Hi, I'm Sierra Johnson. I've been speed skating for a couple months now. It's a lot of fun. If you have a need for speed, start speed skating. All you need to do is check out our website to see if it's in your area. Then sign up and rent some speed skates. You'll meet other skaters, learn how to do it, and most of all, get fit. Until next time, keep fit and have fun. Body Break, Body break Kids. Every week, I'll be joined by these guys and we'll talk trends, politics, education, and much more. Watch Junior EC TV only on Rogers TV. Welcome back to New Canadians. Many internationally trained professionals face some real challenges in finding employment in their chosen field here in Canada. That's why having organizations like Access Employment who connect newcomers to employers and offer job search support is important in achieving a workforce that reflects its population. HR Connections is a seven-week program that equips internationally trained HR professionals to quickly integrate into the Canadian labour market. And it's a bridging program. It was launched in 2009 in response to Human Resource Professional Association research that suggested that there were many, many internationally trained HR professionals coming into Canada and never using that skill set. In the face of globalization, it just doesn't make sense for companies to have access to this multitude of languages and this wealth of international talent, yet not be able to integrate these professionals into our Canadian workplace. As long as they can put a schedule together with a commitment, if the facility in which they're operating out of is too large, they can put a schedule together to have it done within a year. I was working in New Delhi, India, and I've been working as an HR. Um, been into recruitments for more than 10 plus years now. 
been into corporate side and both the consulting side. Immigrated to Canada in 2012 of September. I knew that I needed something more than applying online to the jobs that are available. I needed a targeted search or a much streamlined search where I can actually reach out to the people that would hire me. My professional background is that I'm a human resource management specialist with experience from the corporate and non-profit backgrounds and also with the public-private partnerships. I moved to Canada in April 2013 with my family. The shortcoming or the gap that I was facing in my job search was that I needed more uh, exposure to the Canadian context, that I needed to get more understanding about Canadian uh, human resource legislation, processes, understand what employers expect from HR managers. Access was a great fit just because it was short, it was kind of professionals that I would be working in the similar environment. It was a great opportunity and I didn't want to miss that. I needed this kind of bridge program or this kind of training to enable me to understand these facets better so I could put a more relevant application and the employer could also be more confident when they're assessing and screening my application. The access program was multifaceted and my learning and exposure was in four different dimensions. So we started off with Canadian workplace culture, Canadian employer expectations, Canadian business communication standards. The second component was a uh, Canadian human resource legislation, both at the federal and provincial level. Then we had a resume and cover letter component that trained us in job search mechanisms. Also, we had a mentorship program where we were linked with mentors placed in HR posts in Canadian organizations. Because you are trained. Without the mentor's guidance and without the opportunity to meet and discuss with the mentor and get their knowledge, get their tips, get their insight, it is fairly impossible for new immigrants to reach and establish contact with such well-placed individuals in HR. We don't all think the same, do we? And when we practice this from an HR perspective in the workplace, don't assume because one person thinks it's safe, I'll take the opposite approach, that it's going to be deemed safe by somebody else. I finished my program in uh, first 21st of December. By mid-January, I got a call from Michelle from our HR Connections program, and she told me that uh, there is an opportunity for an internship program with Randstad. Did the internship for a month and a half, and then I got interviewed for a permanent position into their corporate HR team. And in June, I joined them as a, as a permanent employee. I would absolutely recommend that new immigrants who are serious about working in human resource management should focus on enrolling in HR connections as soon as they can feasibly do so. Because it is those first few months after arriving in Canada that the disappointment and frustration can increase. And the sooner they enroll in this program, the sooner they start to get the exposure and the knowledge they need to begin applying for those HR-specific jobs, the sooner they can get linked to the HR form.